Tuesday today, decided to pull the potato harvest. The potato plants still had a little while that they possibly could have gone, but as I've been bandicooting some of them, I've noticed that there's been some bug damage. So we decided to pull them all now and uh, limit that damage. The purple potatoes look like they were fairly prone to scab. So we probably won't grow those ones again, but we've done fairly well. I'm gonna weigh them up soon and we'll see how much it is.
Gonna go through all the potatoes, sort them out. Gonna sort them into these baskets. They weigh about 500 grams each, and then we're gonna weigh them and see how much the total weight of the potatoes are. So we're sorting them into colours to try and see uh, varieties, just to try and see how much we got of each sort. I did plant two uh, cream potatoes though, a white star and a Desiree, and we don't know which is which, so they'll just all be put together. We're going to have a basket of ones that have some bug damage or some skin pulled off that we're going to wash and use straight away. The sapphire ones, the skins are quite damaged on a lot of them. So we'll probably use them pretty quick as well. We don't really have anywhere to store for them to cure. So we're going to lay them out and see how we go. But pretty much going to have to can most of them straight away. We just don't have anywhere that we can store them. So we'll make a lot of soup and can the soup and things like that and see how we go. Uh, but, we, you know, it's a pretty good harvest regardless. I never expected there to be this many potatoes. Was editing the potato harvest video and realized that I didn't do an intro, outro, sorry. And uh, then I came out this morning to do an outro, and then when I went back to edit it again, I realized that there was no sound, so that was great. Um, we so the bed that we harvested the potatoes from, we got about 60 kilos of potato. Uh, <laughs> don't know if you can hear that frog in the background that's in the water tank that I'm standing behind, but we <laughs> it's very loud. Um, 60 kilos of potato. We're going to have to preserve most of it because we don't have anywhere that's uh, cool and dark to store them. But we're going to try putting some in the cupboard in the kitchen and see for the, the bigger ones that will store better. Because I want to make potato salad and stuff for Christmas Day. Um, I am thinking that I might try shredding some for hash browns. But I think I have to par bake it before I freeze it or dehydrate it to store it that way. So I'm going to have to look that up. If you have any ideas, then let me know. So the bed that we pulled it out of is quite a large bed. I'm going to show you in a second. And it's going to need another crop in there or a cover crop of some sort. So there's a lot of wood beetles because we use sort of a, a hugelkulter uh, method. So there's some uh, wood breaking down in the bottom. And we used a fair bit of manure, compost, and a whole lot of straw. It was sort of a Ruth Stout style bed. So I'm going to have to plant something in there now. I'm thinking maybe cabbage might go in there well because cabbage is such a heavy feeder and I'm going to have to plant some more cabbage post Christmas. So I got a new soil blocker recently that I'm going to give a go at getting some cabbage seedlings started and maybe cabbage would be good to go here. I'm not real sure. Let me know if you know of anything that goes well as a follow on crop from potatoes. We probably don't want to plant potatoes there again next year because the purple potatoes had such bad scab. So I'd imagine that the bacteria is in the soil and we should avoid replanting potatoes there. So we'll have to set up another bed somewhere for them for next year. But we'll wait and see how we handle the 60 kilos that we got this year. Because if we waste them, then it's not worth doing, is it? So we need to figure that out. So the bed is over here, let me show you. So this is the bed here. Quite a large bed, I would say, I don't know, two by six-ish, three by six-ish maybe? Maybe three by six-ish. So quite a significant size. I can turn it into three or four rows to put as different crops the potatoes in. Um, to narrow up the and hill it sort of into three or four rows for that purpose and put some cardboard down the walkway or something. We do have the butternut pumpkins vines that I'm letting trail around beside it so I am directing them back towards the rest of them as they go and we have got some issues with 
something too that I've come home to discover some dying off in places so I'm not real sure about that but we do have some significant size butternut pumpkins floating around some small ones that have just been pollinated there's another significant sized one in there so not sure see how we go I'm not entirely sure why the leaves are dying off the way they are it doesn't really look like powdery mildew it's got a similar pattern but not sure I'll have to come out and assess these separately I haven't assessed them since I came back I only just noticed it while I was filming this so anyway we're happy with the harvest that was pretty significant considering that we haven't had any success with potatoes before so we're pretty happy with that it was pretty exciting to pull them all up yes the plants could have gone a bit longer the potatoes would have been quite a bit larger on some of the plants but I think some of the plants weren't going to do more than what they did either uh, I think that we have there was too much bug issues in the bed and um, possibly the wood that we used wasn't old enough or was too close to the surface of the soil um, like it needed some more soil between the um, the wood and the surface or so maybe we needed more sugar cane on top to create more of a root stat I'm not sure but every year progress not perfection every year our potato yield has gotten better so that's the main thing we we've gotten better this year next year we'll get even better again but we do have to figure out how to preserve the potatoes in the best way possible preferably not having to use fridges or freezers we're much more inclined to put it on shelves because we just don't have the space so I can can plenty of it in soup and things like that but it's just a bit time consuming to do that it'd be nice to be able to do some bulk fill the dehydrator up with potato shreds or something I don't think I really want to dehydrate cubes of it I'd prefer to can that in chicken stock and so that it can be put in a soup straight away it doesn't require extensive rehydration in a soup pot it like if it's off the bed off the shelf you can basically pour it in a pot five minutes later you can eat it so we'll see how we go but anyway thanks for joining me and I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, if you want to see more please subscribe thanks <laughs>